The need for violence is essentially fear. The more fearful you are, the more the tendency for you to become violent. You will see people who are fearful, first thing is they'll get verbally violent. If they have… if they… if they find that uh, whoever is in front of them is physically of less capability, they will also become physically violent. Where there is no fear, the need for violence will come down dramatically. So, why is the fear? What is the fear about? Essentially, the basis of fear is just this. In this <laughs> a vast expanse of creation, this cosmic space, if you are identified yourself as a little body, this small little person, in this vast cosmos, fear is natural. Most people are living in ignorance and trying to avoid fear, but if you really look at it, you are in the middle of nowhere. Maybe you're thinking I'm in Los Angeles or New York, but actually, in this cosmos, you are in the middle of nowhere, your GPS cannot tell you where you are <laughs> If you really look at it, this tiny piece of life, if you're identified only with your bi biological self, this tiny piece of life should shiver in terror. One way of avoiding this is not look at all those things. Think, think you are the greatest <laughs> nonsense on the planet and go on. That'll work for some time and when life… when life and death gives you a taste of it, then fear will come anyway. But. Transcending fear, what it means is, if you bring your life in such a way, if you allow your life to happen in a certain way to you, if your experience of life transcends the boundaries of your physicality, if you handle your body in such a way that your body is as competent as it can be in the physical world, and your inner experience is beyond this physicality of who you are, you will see fear will become equanimous. One thing is you're physically competent, which makes you physically efficient and competent to handle the physical world. One who is physically fit walks into physical situations without much fear, simply because of physical competence. This must be done right from very young age. Half the children going to school, you see, they're turning like pumpkins, drinking corn syrup <laughs> So, when you become like a pumpkin as a child, then Halloween works for you, everything is fearful. If you are fit and competent and you are ready to fight the dragons, <laughs> then your physical self is competent, because of that, a whole lot of fear is taken care of. And the other dimension is, your inner experience has transcended your physicality, then there is no fear at all. Now you have transcended violence on both levels because physical is always under threat, we need to understand this. Physical is not a permanent fixture, physical is under threat. When we say we are mortal, what it means is physicality is under threat always, that's the nature of physicality. Physicality is not an indestructible process, physicality is a fragile process. We can make it strong, but it's still a fragile process. So if these two dimensions are handled, that physical competence of a certain caliber and an inner experience which is beyond physicality, fear is handled. If fear is handled, transcending violence naturally happens. This is what Kalari is trying to do, a discipline which brings an enormous physical competence. At the same time, there is a meditative dimension to it which is striving to bring that experience beyond physicality.
not about fighting somebody, it is about bringing yourself to the ultimate possibility that you can bring your body and mind to, and then work on your spiritual process to transcend these two things. Transcendence is not an avoidance, this must be understood. Transcendence means you're building something as a solid footstep over which you can stand or you can use to step over because the fear is essentially because of fragility of physicality and because of this fear, the need for violence. Violence means just this. When my physicality is threatened, I choose to destroy your physicality. That's all violence is. So if my physicality is not threatened, the need for destroying your physicality has considerably gone down. There may be other reasons, but still considerably gone down within me. If there is no threat to my physicality, the need to destroy your physicality or harm your physicality has gone down dramatically within myself. That is one level, and another level is to have an experience beyond my own physicality that even if my physicality is threatened, the need to destroy the physical nature of the other has gone down because my experience of life is beyond my physical nature. Conflict is happening everywhere in the planet in so many forms. Between two countries it is happening, between two communities it's happening, within the family it is happening, within you it's happening, yes? But it is only because there is conflict within you, there is a possibility of conflict outside of you, isn't it? Hmm? Because there is violence within you, violence is possible in the world. If there was no violence at all in you, would violence be possible in the world? No. So we just have to look at the conflict within. If we just settle this, outside conflict will slowly settle. It'll take some time because we have put a certain momentum to it, but it has to settle, isn't it? If all of us become truly peaceful human beings, no conflict within us, would Bombay be peaceful? Hmm? Do we have to separately ca start a campaign for peaceful Bombay? No. If people were peaceful, society would be peaceful, isn't it? So what is the conflict? The conflict is just this, you got identified with things that you are not. You are identified with many things that you are not, isn't it? Right now, let's say this vessel belongs to you. You don't just hold it as a vessel. Let us say this vessel came to you from your great-great-great-grandfather. Now this is not just a vessel, yes? You are identified with it. If I just grab this vessel and go away, you are willing to die to get this vessel. Isn't it so? Because you are so identified with this vessel now, if I just break this vessel, your heart will break. Just see with how many things you have done this. From the clothes that you wear, to the people who live with you, the house that you live in, the things that you own and possess, everything has become you, isn't it? Yes? So what is you is not here, what is you is spread all over the place. When you are spread all over the place, naturally, wherever you move it gets entangled, it gets entangled somewhere. Yes? When what is you is so spread out, whichever way you go, every doorway you will get stuck. <laughs> That's what is happening. That's why there's constant friction and conflict, because you're identified with so many things that you are not. When I say you're identified with things that you are not, it also includes your mind, it also includes your body. Your thoughts are not yours, please see. Your emotions are not yours, please see. These are all things that you picked up from outside and identified yourself with. Isn't it so? Yes? Your body is not yours, it is something that you picked up from outside. If you sit here and you are not identified with anything, you are simply yourself. You are not identifying yourself with anything or you are not getting into your make-believe situation of being something that you are not.
<clears throat> a man went to the psychiatrist. He went and said, Doctor, all the time I think I am wet paint. I am afraid to touch anybody. I don't want anybody to touch me because I think I am wet paint. Then the doctor said, that's no problem, I will treat you. Six months, the doctor gave him very expensive treatment. Then slowly the patient felt better. And then he one day came and said, doctor, I'm just feeling fine. I don't feel like that anymore. Thank you very much. He paid his bill and he wanted to shake his hands. The doctor said, I don't want to get wet paint on my hands. <laughs> Once you're identified with things that you're not, you're hallucinatory in nature, isn't it? And all the conflict is coming simply because you're not in touch with reality. You're hallucinatory. Your thoughts, your emotions are all coming from certain identifications, isn't it so? If you can sit here, this chamber will, will do to you. If you sit here, you will see your body is here, your mind seems to be somewhere out there and you are somewhere else. That means you've gotten disidentified with everything. You're just there. Once you're not identified with the body, once you're not identified with the mind, can there be conflict? Hmm? If you've known any kind of suffering in your life, the suffering has either entered you through your body or through your mind, isn't it so? Do you know any other kind of suffering? Once there is a distance between you and your body, once there is a distance between you and your mind, this is the end of suffering. This being cannot suffer anymore. Question of conflict doesn't arise. <laughs>